Hello. Hello, how are you? <laughs> I'm I'm really tired and also excited. What time is it for you? Um it is two AM. Ooh. What are you doing yeah. studying English at two AM? I don't know. In, mm, my internet connection is not so fast every time, so I got a chance right now and um how can I say I uh, I'm here. I see. I understand. So your internet works better when it's very late at night. Is that yeah. right? Yeah. Definitely, yeah. Okay. All right. Well, that's unfortunate, but I'm glad you're here with us studying. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Okay. Actually, I can't even speak English here. I'm so excited. Yeah, I bet you're exhausted right now. It's very, very long day if you go to bed at 2 a.m. Yeah. What do you do during the day? Um, actually, I I came my home after a long bus trip. Oh, that's awful. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. <laughs> that's why I'm tired. Hello. Traveling is really tiring. Yeah. All right. So uh, we'll start with some introductions before we get into the class. We're reading an article today. Um, so I'll go first. I'll introduce myself. My name is Michaela, and I am from Phoenix, Arizona. I've been an English teacher for two or three years now, and I've taught English in Italy and in Brazil. I just started teaching with Verbling a couple weeks ago, and so far I love it. I have a, a great time meeting new people every day and I'm glad you guys came to class so that I can meet you. So let's start with Christian. Can you tell us about yourself, where you're from, and can you tell us a food that reminds you of home or your family? Can you hear us, Christian? All right, Christian, we can't hear you. So if you can hear me, put a message in the chat box and we'll try and uh, see if you're having computer difficulties or what. David, will you um, tell us about yourself, where you're from, and a food that reminds you of home? For me, Christian, no. No, something it's for Christian. like. Oh yeah, no, I know, but Christian isn't responding. I think Christian. Ah, okay. Might be I, I'm from Spain. Okay. From Valencia. Yes. And what's I, a food that reminds you of home? Remind my home. Um, a Cuban rice. Cuban rice. Cuban what's that? rice. What's that? Is <laughs> rice with tomato and and fried egg. Oh, yum! Sounds delicious. Yeah. It's a uh, uh, easy food, but it's uh, it was uh, so common for me in my childhood. <laughs> All right, thank you. Okay, um, Jim, will you tell us about yourself, where you're from, and what is a food that reminds you of home? Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, I am from Turkey, Istanbul. Uh, my name is Eyüp. Awesome, thank you. And what is a food that makes you think of your home or your family? 
sorry, sorry again. Will you tell us a food that reminds you of home or your family? Do you understand? Would you like me to write it in the chat box? Yeah. Okay, so we're talking about foods that remind you of home. Okay. Reminds. Uh... So it makes you remember your home or your family. A specific food. Could be a specific food or a type of food. Uh, I don't know exactly. Can you uh, an example? Can you give me an example? What? Can you give me an example? Sure. So a food that reminds me of home is uh, something that we call chili. <coughs> and it's, it's like beans, <coughs> tomatoes, and sometimes corn or other things, and spices. And it's, it's a food that my dad used to make when I was a child. So it's a food that reminds me of home. Okay. Uh, maybe pass me. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. I'll come back to you though. So think of a food that reminds you of home because I'm going to come back to you. Okay. 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 João. Hello. Can you Hello. hear me? Hello. Yes, I can hear you. Can you tell us okay. about yourself and a food that reminds you of home? Okay, my name is John, my, João, uh, I'm from Brazil, and uh, I, a, a, I have a food that always remember my home. It is a kind of, um, let me see, uh, thin fruit. It's shrimp with uh, onions and garlic and something like that, do you know? Oh, yum, that sounds amazing. Where are you yes. from in Brazil? Oh, my, you know, I'm from northwest Brazil. From North West Brazil, next to uh, Bahia, Recife, you know, Salvador. It's, yeah. It's, uh, I live in Piauí state. Oh, okay. Cool. That's very cool. It's, ah, uh, yes. Yes, next to the beach. <laughs> so next yeah. to it, that's why, that's why I, we, I, we ate there. Uh, seafood. Fr seafood. 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 Awesome. Yeah, I love seafood. Unfortunately, I don't live near the ocean, so. <laughs> oh, you poor thing. But yeah, come bad. on. You are invited. <laughs> you are invited to come here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay, thank you. Mart, your turn. Will you introduce yourself and tell us Hello. about your favorite or your a food that reminds you of home? Um, I'm Mart, and I'm from Turkey. And the food is. Um, in Turkey, there is a food named chikofte, but <coughs> uh, there is no word in English to correspond to it. Okay, so what is it like? Um, can I can you see the link that I sent? Yes. Yeah. Let me let me look at this really quick. Oh, it looks so delicious. Is it meat? Oh, not meat, but um, it, it, it has so many things in it. Ah, okay. It's a very complex dish. Yeah, I don't know how to make it, but my <laughs> dad knows, so I'm just eater, you know? <laughs> yeah. What, what's the leaf on top? Is that mint or basil? I didn't get you. There's on top of the food. There's like a green vegetable type thing. Um, actually, I I don't know either. It looks like <laughs> it is just a photo that I found in, on internet. I see. Well, it looks delicious. It's making me hungry. Yeah, it is. You you <laughs> should try it someday. Okay, I definitely will. I love to eat foreign food and and new food. So maybe I'll have to go search for it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thanks. All right, Miguel, 
Will you introduce yourself and tell us a food that reminds you of home? Uh, sorry, Miguel, I can't hear you. So you might be having mic trouble. If you're having mic trouble, you might be able to um, switch Google, like switch browsers. Sometimes it will help if you switch browsers. I still can't hear you. Teacher, how are I? I was talking about my my food, my seafood, and uh -huh. I couldn't say uh, the uh, the name of this food. I'm putting here this link of this food, and okay. uh, you. They, you, um, all my classmates can see that the how it seems delicious. <laughs> Ooh, it, it looks so so good. Do you put lime yeah. on it? Yes, I forgot. I forgot it, but you use it. Wow, it looks so delicious. Thank you for sharing that. You guys are making. Oh, me so <laughs> Can you? Okay. Hear me? Oh yeah, Miguel, I can yes. hear you. Yeah, Yay. it's my first time uh, with uh, this type well, of class. So. welcome. Thank you very much. I'm Miguel, I'm from Madrid, Spain, and uh, this that always, uh, a food that always uh, reminds me to to my home is uh, uh, this called tortilla, that is a mix between potato and eggs, all mixed, mixed up and fried, and it's really tasty. Oh, that sounds so good. Oh, yeah, now I'm super hungry. I can't wait after class to go eat a big meal. All right. Um, oh yeah, wait. We have to get one more. Jim, will you can, you? can you think of something that reminds you of home now? Uh, I can give you an an food uh, name. Turkish name, Yaprak Boma. <laughs> <laughs> and what is that? <laughs> um, I, I'll, I'll look for it. A uh, picture? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, tell us, why do you like it? Because it is awesome. You can make a leaf rolling and uh, inside some rice and some eat. Oh wow, that looks so good. Actually, I think I've eaten something very similar before. I don't know if it's yeah. the same thing, but I I love eating foreign food and especially um, especially food that's more from the east. And so I tried. I I think I've tried this before. Very very delicious. I love yeah, it. Special Turkish food. It was served. One of my friends got married a few months ago. And they had something similar. It's made with um, gra like grape leaves, right? Yes. Mm, yeah. Yeah. They served it there. It was so good. <laughs> bon appetit. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, here's another picture. Yeah, they look delicious. Okay. So today we're going to read an article, and the article is about food and love, and why people associate food with love. So maybe you've heard may, before, huh? May I ask something? Yes, say something. Um, I guess there's a problem. Why am I hearing your voice more than one time? Um, that only happens if somebody has the Verbling page open twice. So w wow. when you go into Verbling, you have to click a, a link to get to the class. And when you do that, it leaves the original page open. And if you have two pages open at once, you hear an echo. Okay, thank you. Yeah, no problem. It sounds like the echo is gone. So hopefully yeah. it's not a problem anymore. Hello. Okay, looks like we got... Oh, wait, Christian. Christian, yeah. Hello, Christian. You fixed can you your hear microphone. Me? Yes, I can hear you perfectly. Okay. I'm Christian. I'm from Buenos Aires, Argentina. Awesome. And a food that reminds you of home? Uh, perhaps uh, meat. Like in Argentina, we call asado. It's a traditional meal that we, we eat every Sunday. Ooh, yum. I never tried that before. It's very, very interesting. <laughs> I'll have to try it one day. 
All right, thank you for sharing, and I'm so glad that you got your microphone working. Thanks. Okay. Um, so, does everyone see the article, or would you like me to post it on the the chat box? Yes. Um, I'm gonna post it yes, here just in case. Okay. Please. Yeah, there okay. it is. So okay. that's the article we're looking over today, and it has to do with food and love because it's very common when people think of certain foods they think of their mother or their father or um, a friend people associate food with um, with other people and feelings and emotions and I think that's a very interesting connection do you guys agree that food connects a lot to emotions and to feelings yeah. Probably. I know when I'm really sad, all I want is like a big piece of cake. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I feel like it's very connected in that way. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to take turns reading it. And as we go, if you guys have any questions, I'll like pause every couple of paragraphs to discuss vocabulary or anything else, ideas, anything else you guys want to discuss. So hopefully we'll be able to get through it. It's a long article, but I think we'll have time for all of it. Um, oh, also, if you guys are curious, there's in the very beginning it has the title, and then below that you can see a blue square, and you can actually play this article. So if you want to, after class, you can listen to the article by yourself, which I think is a interesting and really good exercise for you guys to do. We're not going to do it right now, we're going to read it, but after class if you guys want to use that, I think it's a really good um, way to, to learn and to interact more. So, um, first reader is Christian, I believe. Will you read the first paragraph for us? Food is love? Yeah, right there. Do you want to read it? Yes. Is food is love? American must have their kids a lot, but one set of children and adolescents in the USA are overweight or obese. Okay, do you guys agree? It's kind of sad, right? <laughs> All right. So, David, will you read the next paragraph? Uh, yes. And our emotional response to food may be one of the reasons so many kids eat so much. According to a poll by NPR, the Robert Booth Johnson Foundation and the Harvard School of Public Health, the poll found that in more than a quarter of families, Food is considered an important way to show affection. Okay, so do you guys have any vocabulary questions so far? No. Nothing? What means poll? Poll, yes. Okay, well, does anyone know the meaning of poll? It's, uh, it's like a survey or something like that. Like um, a what? Oh yeah, study, like a survey. A, a report or something like that when you get a lot of data. Yeah, a survey or a report. It's when you ask people how they think or feel and then you collect all of the answers and put it into statistics and categories and it's like a scientific way of looking at the responses people give. Any other vocabulary questions from that section? No. All right, well, do you guys think that it's true? It says, our emotional responses to food may be a reason why so many kids eat so much. So if you have an emotional response, like if you think that food is similar to love, then maybe you're going to eat a lot, right? Do you think that might be why the ob obesity rate is getting higher and higher? I also think that the the type of food you are you're eating is very important. Uh, for example, in the United States, uh, the food is uh, has a lot of uh, fat. Yeah. So you know? if the food if the food is low in calories, 
If the food is low quality and you're eating a yeah. lot of it, then you're definitely going to gain weight. And the U.S. has a big problem with that. And even uh, the U.S. is the first in obesity, but there are many countries that aren't far yeah. behind. And so it's increasingly, as, pe as people get developed and as countries develop, um, it becomes more and more of a problem because the it's funny that the country is developing and getting better and the quality of food is actually going down. Okay, so let's try paragraph number three. And that's to Jim. Would you read paragraph number three for me? Okay. That result is no su surprise to Carol Cassie, who lives in Great Falls, Mount. For many years, she ran a restaurant that called Mama Cassie's, where the front of each menu proclaim proclamate who is love. Okay. Thank you. We'll read one more paragraph and then discuss vocabulary. Zhuang, will you read the next paragraph? Do you hear me? Zhuang? Are you there? Okay. Um, how about Miguel? Will you read the next paragraph? Yes. I wanted my customers to know as soon as they came into the restaurant that I was caring for them, says Casey, uh, who is also the author of Mama Casey's Food is Love Cookbook. All right. And do you guys have any vocabulary questions on these two paragraphs? What about proclaim? Are you guys, yeah. you understand proclaim? Yeah. What does proclaim mean? Anybody? Mm, it's like announcing or something yeah. like that. Yeah. yeah, like announcing to say something, usually with a lot of enthusiasm. Awesome, thank you. Um, Next to read, wait, next to read is Rodrigo, I believe. Hi, Rodrigo. Where are you from? And um, can you tell us a food that reminds you of home? I'm from Brazil. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. So... Can you introduce yourself to us and tell us a food that reminds you of home? Uh, sorry, a food? A food that makes you remember home. Oh, I can't hear you. Sure, interesting and nice. Yeah, whose noise is that? Is that Christian's? There we go. Okay. Back to... Ooh. We've got a lot of people in class now. Ah. Back to Rodrigo. Rodrigo, can Hello, you Rodrigo. give us a food that reminds you of home? Yes, teacher, can you write it for me? I can't hear very well because I hear a song, a different song. I don't hey. know what... Christian? Yeah? I think there's some some noise coming from your end. Would you mind, when you're not talking, would you mute your microphone? Okay. Thanks. Sorry, just so that we don't get the, the noise and people can hear what's going on. Thank you. Okay, Rodrigo. Tell me a food a that food. reminds you of home. A food that oh. reminds... Okay. A food that reminds you of home. So something that you maybe ate when you were young or that your mother would cook for you or your father oh, would cook course, for you. Sorry. Uh, okay, okay. Mm, I think barbecued. <laughs> what? Barbecued. 
sounds good. Do you have it a lot, or did you have it when you were younger? When I was younger. I so think, I, I'm yeah. younger now, but but <laughs> I remember when we we get together. I see, like family events and stuff. Yes, 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 right. Okay, cool. Thank you. Um, Rodrigo, will you read? Do you see that we're reading an article today? Yes, yes, I, I, I do. Okay, um, we're reading an article, and I won't ask you to read this round so that you can catch up and you know where we are. But um, let's see, let's Cost have. Customers. Huh? Ah. ah. You want to read? Yes. Uh, okay. It's Customers. Yeah, perfect, right there. So start okay. just with that sent with that uh, paragraph there. Okay. Uh, customers at the restaurant really did feel like family, says Erin Duff Oswald, who used to work at the restaurant and ate them the cookbook. Awesome. Thank you. Next paragraph, let's have. Um, Salah, am I saying your name right? Uh, yes, Salha, but I can't see the screen. You can't see the screen? No. Can you read the chat box? But I don't see anything. Not even the chat box? No, I don't have. Okay, try and reload the screen. Maybe that will help. And if not, you can always try and change browsers. Or uh, if it's not loading properly, you might just want to try and leave and come back to see if that helps. Okay. Otherwise, you can just listen along with us, and that's fine, too. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, Carlos Edwin, can you hear me? All right, we'll come back to you, Carlos. Christian, would you read the next paragraph? Okay. Uh, people would get engaged at Manos Casey, Oswald says. They would satisfy the pregnancy craving on tartar cake from Mama's Casey. They would bring their babies into Mama Casey later, and Carol would walk around the restaurant with them. Okay, thank you. Next paragraph, David. Casey says she loved running the restaurant, but looking back, she says there's something that concerns her. Some of her customers, including whole families, didn't seem to know when to stop. Awesome. Next paragraph, Jim. They will have a big place of whatever, like a big pork sandwich that was just posing with cheese and pulled pork and the meat sauce. Cassie says, and then they would have a piece of cheesecake afterwards. Okay, any vocabulary questions until now? Oozing. Yes. Oozing. 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 Oozing means something that's coming out. It usually is talking about something that's a little liquidy. So something like toothpaste. Do you know toothpaste, that consistency? If you squeeze a bottle of toothpaste and it kind of drips out, that's oozing. So you might also talk about oozing with food, like um, cheese or beans. They kind of ooze. It's like a slow dripping or flowing of something. It's usually uh, the consistency that makes a difference. It's um, not very liquid, but also not solid. So something that's like pudding or um, sauces, a lot of times they ooze. They kind of slowly flow out. This is the oozing thing. Yeah, oozing. Oozing thing, okay. And mm -hmm. this teacher, this word after, let me see, afterward. Afterward? Afterward. After something. So um, I ate dinner, and afterward I. Um, 
went on a walk. It means after dinner is when I went on the walk. Oh, okay. Um, Rodrigo wants to know what pork is. Does anyone pork. know what pork mm. is? Yes, uh, pig. pig. It's a pig. pig. Yes, it's the meat from pigs. Okay, meat from pigs. Thanks. Okay. Um, João, are you there? Okay, yes, I am. All right, and can you continue reading for us? Okay, the just play. Okay, um, I began with the just. Uh -huh. I'm right. Uh -huh. Just play gluttony, mm -hmm. or did the customers at Mama Kissen think more food meet more love? Love is probably at least at least part of the answer. Scientists say because of the way humans have evolved. Okay. Continuous? Okay. No, you can stop there. What is gluttony? Uh, it's kind of, I don't know. I, I thought that is something with a, uh, let me see. I don't know, I don't, I really don't know. Sorry. A person who eats a lot of meat. <laughs> yeah, it's anyone who eats a lot. Like, someone who eats too much. It also mm -hmm. can refer to anything else. Anything in excess can be gluttony. So it could be food or it could be other things like shopping or other I bad know. habits. I know okay. what what is, but I cannot explain. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, <laughs> okay, that's fine. Um, next paragraph. Uh, let's have Miguel. Will you read the next paragraph for us? Yes. Uh, you can see some aspects of human food behavior in our animal an ancestors, including marmoset and tamarind monkeys. These monkeys are like people in that fathers and siblings help raise the offspring, and all the adults make a big deal of providing food to youngsters in the, in the family, says Adrian Yagi. <laughs> A uh, biological anthropo anthropologist at, at, the, at the University of California, Santa Barbara. Okay, thank you very much. Rodrigo, will you re get the next paragraph? Okay. Uh, the older monkeys give a special call when they find a special treat, like uh, insects that are big and juicy and very nutritious. The JG says that then they adopt the food offering poster to present the young monkeys with the treat. Thank you. Any vocabulary questions in those paragraphs? Siblings. Siblings. Does anyone yeah. know what that means? Sisters I and brothers. Yeah, sisters and brothers. It's for both sexes, so it could be a sisters or brothers, okay. or both Thank of you. them together. No, yeah, no problem. Okay, and do you guys think that's true? Um, I think it's really cute that the monkeys save special treats for younger monkeys, because I think you can totally see that humans do that too. Like, you give treats to little kids, little candies and stuff. And you see that everywhere, so I think it's adorable that you that it, we can see it in monkey ancestors as well. All right, next paragraph. Um, Salah, are you still having technical difficulties? No, no, yes, and now it's better. Oh, it's better. I can okay, see the screen here. Yeah. Would you like to continue with the article or? Yes. Okay. Um. I can, I can read? Yes, please do, Start, starting with chimpanzees. Uh, chimpanzees, an animal ancestor that's even closer to humans, take the food is love concept to the next level. Chimps share food with individual, individuals outside their own family. The sharing often involves a precious food, meat, and a chimp who makes a kill does not share the meat with everyone. Jackie says only the chimp in his group were long term 
long-term allies. Sharing food appears to be a way of strengthening the alliance and ensuring future cooperation, he says. Not in like a business lunch. <laughs> okay, vocabulary questions? What about allies? Does anyone know what allies means? Long-term allies? Anybody know the meaning of the term ally? Speak up if you do. Okay, I'll tell you. Allies are a partner that benefits you. So it's like a, it could be a friend, but it's someone, yeah, thank you, Eduardo. It could be friends, but it's also someone that benefits you. So um, in a war, someone who's on your side is an ally, and someone who's on the opposite is not an ally. It's someone who benefits you. What about alliance? What do you think an alliance is? If ally is a friend, what do you think an alliance is? It's a noun. Yeah, it is. So what does it mean? It, it's, well, I'll tell you. It's the, the relationship. So yeah. if I have an ally, we are alliances. Like, we have an alliance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other vocabulary questions or we, will we move on? Look at that picture. The picture of the monkeys is so cute, isn't it? They're eating fruit or something. It's kind of weird, but <laughs> really cute. Okay, next paragraph. Um, oh, looks like we have a couple new students. Can you hear me, new student? I cannot read your name. Would you help me out? Um, I'm Marcia. Nice to meet you. Oh, sorry. Yes, nice to meet you, Marcia. Where are you from? Um, I was born in Brazil, but I'm living in UK. Oh, great. Well, it's glad to. I'm glad to have you with us. Where in Brazil are you from? Um, Paraná, near São Paulo. Oh, I, I've heard that's beautiful. A beautiful place. Yes, <laughs> we can say it's, <laughs> okay. it's beautiful and warm. Awesome. Yeah, the best weather, right? Yeah. In uh, in Wales, it's um, cloud, cloud, mm -hmm. and uh, raining, and it's snowing. Terrible. Ooh. Oh, no. That's the opposite. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thank you very much for coming. And there's another new student whose name that I can't really read because it's in a alphabet that I'm not familiar with. Can you hear me, other new student? No? Maybe not? Okay. How about... How about Carlos? Can you... You haven't introduced yourself yet, Carlos. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Hello. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, I am Carlos from El Salvador, Central America. Mm -hmm. And this is the third class I have here on Berlin, and I don't know what, what else to say. Uh, I tell us, um, uh, tell us what you do for a living. I am an electrical engineer. Wow, cool. Yeah. And are there any foods that remind you of home? Uh, well, a lot, uh, but uh, I couldn't translate them. I I, I don't have the uh, in our level of English to translate those uh, dishes. Names. That's okay. Just tell us something like the type of food. Is it meat? Is it a vegetable? Oh no. Well, when I was little, I didn't used to eat or uh, eat meat. Really, I, I just learned to eat it when I became ad adult. Wow. Uh, and uh, maybe the favorite food that I remember it was is a soup. It is a soup of uh, cheese, uh, fresh cheese, and my mom used it to prepare it. But uh, and she added, added I don't, I can't uh, really ha handle the past participle 
of any verb. So you <laughs> will have to help me with that. Okay. Uh, okay, and she used it to add uh, these uh, vegetables uh, in that soup, and it was really delicious. But uh, at some time, uh, my mom uh, stopped preparing that soup, and uh, many years later, she <laughs> She started to prepare it again, but it was it tastes very different, and and, and I, I, I don't know it uh, ruin ruin it. How, how do you say that? Ruin it uh, the uh, the memory. Reinvent? No, 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 no. Ruin it. No, ruin it. Like damage. That like make it uh, the same bad. <laughs> because I, I remember that. It was more delicious, but maybe it is because I have. Maybe she changed the recipe. Yeah. All so. right. Thank you very much for sharing with us. Would you like to continue reading the article? Uh, with the pro with the paragraph uh, below the picture. Yeah, it's below Bonobos. the picture. Yeah, yeah, exactly, right there. Bonobos are another of our close relatives in the eighth world. But unlike chimpanzees, bonobos live in groups from by females and emphasize cooperation over competition. And like people, bonobos use food to make new friends, not just to keep old ones. Perfect, thank you. Christian, will you read the next paragraph? Okay. Researchers show with this in a series of experiments done at the Lola Yabonobo Sanctuary in the Democratic Republic of Congo. Thank you very much. Um, Jim, will you get the next paragraph? Okay. The experiments evolved a plate of food. What we call it is the giant salad bowl. So we have apples, bananas, peanuts, papaya and cucumber all mix it together says Jim here come an evolutionary anthropologist at Duke University thank you. Will, you will you continue reading Marcia Marcia can you hear me yes are you continue um, well, researchers give the, the salad bowl to a bonobo in a locked enclosure. The bonobo has two neighbors in adjacent enclosure, enclosures who don't have one of the neighbors is a bonobo uh, they know and one is a stranger. Okay, thank you. Will you continue? Mine, will you continue for me? Or do you know where we are? Yes. Okay, thanks. Will you continue for me then? Only the bonobo with the salad bowl can unlock the doors that would let a neighbor in. So basically we create a situation that they can eat or they can share, can't say. Thank you very much. Next paragraph, Rodrigo. Okay. Uh, in most of the time, bonobo eat the salad bowl we share, but not eat the bonobo. They are already new. The majority of the time, they choose to share with the stranger. Then say. Okay. Any vocabulary questions until now? Me, boom. What? Bone. Bone? Uh, it's, it's, let me see. <laughs> Will you write it in the chat box so I can see what word you're talking about? Okay, okay. Bowl. Can anyone help him with that word? What does bowl mean? I can help. Okay, tell him. Uh, the ball is uh, to, uh, for example, you do the bowling in which you throw it, so it's like saying the ball. Okay, cool.
could be. What else? What's a more common term this, for bowl? This is sort of dishes. It's the deep salad. Yes. Bowl. Yes, exactly. So it it does have two meanings, but the meaning here they're talking about is like something to eat food out of. It's shaped like this, and you can eat soup or um, ice cream out of a bowl. But you could also use it like um, like Subham said. You can also say bowling, which is a sport. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, hold on. I'm going to post the link to this article one more time in the... Oh, thank you, Rodrigo. Thank you very much, <laughs> Michelle. You're, you're welcome. Okay, thanks a lot. Let's see. Um, would you like to start reading, Subham? Uh, yes, but I'm unaware where he left at the last paragraph, so... I uh, just, uh, just joined, so I'm not aware of the link, as you have given the link right now to me. So I don't know where to start from. Okay, start from, it's uh, a little more than halfway down, and it's, let me see. It starts with, oh no, now I lost myself. It starts with, and most of the time, oh no, that's not where we are. No, what was more? What, what was, was more. most surprising? Yeah, what was most surprising? That's how the paragraph starts. And most of the time, the Bonobo with the salad bowl they share, but not with the Bonobo they already know. The majority of the time, they chose to share with the stranger, then says. What's the most surprising, though, is that often the stranger who had just gotten access to the food would let the third Bonobo in, and all the three Bonobos would eat together, then says. Okay, thanks. Will you continue? Oh, looks like we have another new student. Andre? Uh, hi. Hi, Andre. Where are you from? How are you? I'm from Brazil. All right. Cool. Nice to meet you, Andre. Uh, nice to meet do you. Do you have the Do you have the article open? Yes. Where Where is it? Yes, it's, I have. Okay, it's in the chat box. Would you like to read for us? We're uh, starting. Or would you like me to skip you and come back when you understand where we are? No, I can't read. I, I was I was with you, but I'm lost now. Okay. Um, what? Where, where are you? It starts with, and most of the time. That's the paragraph that we need. Yeah, to. And most of the time. Okay, just read. Yeah. yeah and most of the time. Oh. No. Teacher. Oh my gosh, sorry, 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 what, sorry, sorry. What? Not yeah. that. Teacher, uh, <laughs> what was most no surprising? Next. Yeah. Sorry. What was most su what, um, what was most surprising though is that of often the stranger who had just gotten access to the food would let the third bonobo in. And all three bonobos would eat together, then says. Okay, next paragraph. Carlos, will you read for us? Oh, okay. Um, that's when, right? That's and that, when. Bring, that brings us back to? Sorry? It starts with, and that brings us back to humans. Oh, okay. Uh, and that brings us, bring us back to humans. It's not clear how long our human ancestors have been sharing food, but it appears that the social importance of food took a big leap uh, for what well, about one million or two million years ago. The John Allen of the Brain and Cre Creativity Institute at the University of Southern California is the author of the the Omniboros Mind, Omniboros Mind, a book about how our relationship with, uh, with food has evolved. Evolved or evolved? Evolved. Oh. <laughs> no, I, I can't really say. <laughs> Any vocabulary questions yet? I have uh, some question, but that is not related to the vocabulary. Okay. What's your I question? I would like to. Yeah, I would like to ask that. For example, reading the paragraphs, some of 
them, like my friends are from UK and some of my friends are from US. When I talk with them, it creates a, like confusion in my mind. Is it some particular lingo that is followed for speaking in a UK English or maybe an uh, US type of English? What would um, is it? There are differences, but most of them are, are not very pronounced differences. So most of the time, if you speak American English or British English, it's pretty much exactly the same. The main difference is accent. Mm -hmm. And of course, there are some vocabulary differences. Like earlier, I talked about fancy. The, the word fancy is used differently in American English and British English. So there are some minor vocabulary differences. But for the most part, it's very, very similar. Okay, so for example, like uh, in the last paragraph which we have just read, so there was a word ancestor. So how would you be pronouncing it? Like, would it be same as a pronoun in the English as well as in the US English, or would it be completely different in both of these two? Uh, most of the time, it's pronounced the same, or the stress of the words are pronounced the same. But okay. of course, there are accent differences, so that that makes a difference. So, can you just for uh, let me know like the difference if you pretty well know about that? For example, like if you would say, would it be ancestor or would it be ancestor? Like, how would it be? Um, that word is pronounced the same, more or less. It's ancestor, and I believe that in British pronunciation, it's more like ancestor. So they mm -hmm. say it a little differently. But you're probably not going to have too big a difference either way because the accent is pretty minimal. And if you say ancestor or ancestor, people will understand. If you're in the US, people will understand. And if you're in England, people will understand. So. OK. And by the way, which lingo are you following? You're following the English lingo or, like, uh, or the US lingo right now while teaching to us? Um, well, this article, I believe, was written by an American, but this news um, this NPR, which is a news source that I use a lot, they have mm -hmm. people from all over the world. So sometimes you'll see a British writer and sometimes you'll see an American writer. <laughs> I think this writer is American. Okay, so you mean right now we are following the American reader, the complete script over there? Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. So let's continue with the topic again. Yeah. Sorry, sure. guys, for boring you. This was a question. <laughs> <laughs> all right, cool. I uh, no sorry. I All have right. A, I oh. have a doubt, a doubt about the vocabulary, but not a word. Just, okay. Uh, well, a word, a word, but in the in a sentence. I don't understand uh, the the word for word about. Uh, is what does it mean in that sentence? Uh, what word? Uh, uh, for word. It says, uh, but it appears that the social importance of food took a big lead. Forward about one million or two million years ago. Uh, I don't know. Other, I don't understand if that if that means that uh, it took uh, uh, one million. Oh well, I don't really under, understand if, if it was a process of one million years or not. Or, or no, no, it's not a process of one million years. They're saying that the change occurred at about. A million years in the past. So that's when the change probably occurred. It's not a very specific date and they don't know how long it took for the change to take effect, but, but it, it occurred about one or two million years in the past. But what does the word forward there? Uh, why is it necessary? Yes, it is. So He's saying that they took a big leap forward, which means that there was a large, um, a large progress made, or uh, it's a big difference. Oh. It's kind of oh. like opposable thumbs or something oh, like okay. that. Okay, I understand it now. Thank you. Okay, awesome. Any other questions before we go on? Okay, awesome. So next reader, I think, is Marcia, right? Marcia, are you ready to read? Re ready. Okay. Uh, that's when humans began hunting really big animals like mammoths. Alan said the animals w were so big that they couldn't be eaten by a small number of people. 
that in effect it provides a little arena for sharing in the social exchange. Anna says. Thank you very much. Um, Rodrigo, will you continue for us? Read the next two paragraphs. Okay. Well, I'm lost. <laughs> in order, in order, né? Yeah, in uh, other words. Okay. In other, in other words, the feast is born. Then, when agriculture came along, we aided the harvest feasts, which eventually led to Thanksgiving. And somewhere along the way, our brains become wired to remember that food events and the people associated with them, Alan says. It's probably no accident. He aids that the digestive system produces hormones like insulin, leptin, and ghrelin that act on the hippocampus, a part of the brain that plays a key role in memory. Wow, different words for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, technical words. Those are some tough ones, for sure. Peter, uh, can you help, help me with ADDS? How Ad can I say it? It's pronounced ads. ads, like it sounds like ah, a Z. Ah. Oh, that's okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, next paragraph, let's have Supam. Supam, yeah. can you read that? Definitely is. Ellen says the good brain connection probably exists because our ancestors were more likely to survive if they remembered clearly where they got their last good meal. And he says the same link between good and brain is probably why responds the way he does to a dish his mother used to make him call him ketchup fried rice. <laughs> okay, <laughs> um, just one note. Probably, there's a, a definite emphasis on the first syllable in probably. Just make sure. Of that. Okay. Okay, thank you very much for reading for us. Thank you very much. Andre, will you continue? Andre? Yes, All right. yes. Oh. Uh, Please continue for us. Sure. Every time I make it, I think of my mother. He said. He says. Alan say, says he makes ketchup fried rice for his own children in hopes that they will always associate the dish with their father. Okay. Next paragraph. Carlos, will you read two paragraphs for us? Uh, okay, um, and he, uh, his kids really like that ketchup fried rice. Another system is the brain will kick in the help uh, in to help. I, I can say that. Uh, I'm sorry, I will start. Again. And if his kids really like that ketchup fried rice, another system, the brain will kick in to help create a lasting memory. It's the brain's uh, dopamine system, which uh, rewards us with feelings and pleasure. The dopamine or dopamine uh, system becomes active in people when they look at someone they love and or a favorite food, Alice says. So, in our brains, uh, at least, for food is, is really connected to love and a sense, a, and a sense of well-being. Okay, thank you very much. We're going to have to stop there. There's only a little bit left, and I encourage you to read it after class, but our class is uh, a little bit over time. So do you guys have any last questions about either vocabulary or grammar or anything else before we finish? Anybody have any questions? No. No. All right. Awesome. Um, then I'll see you guys next time. I believe I'm teaching some classes on Saturday, so maybe I'll see you there. Thank, thank you, guys. you very much, and thank you thank again a lot. It was you. really bye nice bye. to learn from you. Thanks. I appreciate nice you. you. Thank bye, you. Bye. 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 bye.